Welcome to another lesson in the TI-30X Plus Math Print series. In this lesson, we take a look at differentiation from first principles, starting with the gradient at a point on a function, and building up to the gradient of the function as a whole. Differentiation from first principles is about limits. To help understand, imagine approximating the circumference of a circle using an inscribed square. Not great, but it's a start. If we change the square to a regular pentagon, the approximation gets a little better. So we can keep going. The perimeter of the regular polygon gets closer and closer to the circumference of the circle. Our polygon never becomes a circle, but the limit for its perimeter is defined. Now let's get back to the point on a function. We can draw a tangent to the point on the curve. By definition, the tangent line shares the same gradient as the point on the curve. We can calculate the gradient of a secant using rise over run. As we move the second point closer and closer to our point of interest, the gradient of the secant approaches the gradient of the tangent. As we do this, the d in the diagram is approaching zero. We can't make d equal zero as this would result in a division by zero. So we let d approach zero and we see that just like the polygon and circle example, our gradient is approaching a limit. The gradient at the point on the curve. Now let's try this using the TI-30X Plus MathPrint calculator. We'll explore the gradient of the point 1, 1 on the function f of x equals x squared. We start by defining f of x equal to x squared. Then press enter. I'll come back to g of x later. For now, let's just return to the calculator's home screen. I'm interested in the gradient of f of x when x equals 1, so I'll store 1 in x. In our previous example, we had a secant connecting the point 1, 1 to 2, 4, which means d equals 1, the horizontal distance between our two points. Now I can type the expression for the gradient. I'll use the fraction template to separate the numerator, rise, and the denominator, run. The difference between our y values is f of x plus d minus f of x. And the denominator is just the difference between the x values. So in our case, d. And press enter. So the gradient of our secant is 3. Now let's explore what happens as d gets smaller. Let's try d equal to 0 0.1. Now we can copy and paste the gradient of the secant and see that the new gradient is 2.1. Now let's try a smaller value for d. We're getting closer and closer to 0. The new gradient is 2.01. We'll go smaller again. Now the gradient is 2.001. It appears that our gradient is approaching 2. We could explore other points one at a time, but let's work efficiently. Return to the function definitions f of x remains the same, but let's define g of x to be the gradient of the secant. Press enter. Now remember that currently d is equal to 0 0.001, a relatively small value, so we should get reasonable estimates for the gradient at each point on the curve, using the table. I'll start at negative 3 in steps of 1 and automatically generate the table. 
And so we see when x is negative 3, f of x is x squared, so 9, but the gradient at this point appears to be approaching negative 6. When x is negative 2, the gradient appears to be approaching negative 4. And when x is negative 1, we see a gradient approaching negative 2. Or in general, the gradient of the function f of x equals x squared appears to be simply double the x coordinate. In other words, the gradient of the function is equal to 2x. Now, you can go ahead, change the function definition, and explore other gradient functions. That's all for this session. Catch you next time.